Hello there, Internet. Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terror video for you guys today. And I, I almost like stuttered a bazillion times in that intro, but uh, somehow I didn't. Anyways, today we got the Noxian banner, boys, and it's no coincidence as we are going to be showcasing Riven yet again, even though I've only showcased her once. In fact, a lot of you have been asking me for quite some time now to play some more Riven in the channel, and I have already expressed my uh, struggles with this champion, but I am very happy with the deck that I got ready for you guys. It's spicy, it's new, it's fresh. And uh, it puts in the work, at least today it did for me. And before we get hop onto that though, I gotta, you know, really briefly explain uh, why there was no upload yesterday. Um, you know, normally <laughs> I don't have to explain myself for every single thing that I do or don't do, right? But I think this is, you know, maybe some of you are uh, somewhat interested at least in what happens, you know, in my day to day life at least, or how things are going in that regard. Since those type of things do to have an effect on you know the videos but basically uh i was feeling sick yesterday uh i'm not the most optimistic guy when it comes to my own health so i automatically assumed that i had covid <laughs> I, I just i came to terms with it right and uh because what happened is uh at the end of the year the 31st i saw my uncle and it turns out that my uncle is positive uh as of a test that he had a few days back so um, I don't feel any symptoms or anything, and, and neither does Gabby or, or any other family members. Uh, their sons have been tested, and they're, po and they're negative. So, you know, it seems like we didn't get the virus, but you never really know. Uh, even if you take... Um, you have to take a PCR test, first of all. Like, if you take an antigen test, that's not really... Honestly, I don't even know if that's worth your time. Uh, I, I just don't think that's a reliable way. I mean, it is, you know... It's definitely more likely than not that it's telling you they're, they're, it's being accurate, right? But ultimately, uh, any sort of test that has the possibility to fail, giving you you know the proper information, I don't really think it's worth, uh, even though it is cheaper than the PCR. But ain't nothing like a PCR, man. I, I, I studied biology, so I, I do actually know uh, the science behind the PCR, which is really interesting. And uh, I will be having a test done myself um, this Friday is the plan so yeah basically wanted to share that with you guys uh yesterday i just was feeling pretty like tired and uh i think i think maybe some some placebo effect was going on there as well because i, I was i was convinced that i was sick but ultimately you know i woke up fine today so for now <laughs> things are are going good in that regard so yeah i'm kind of like rambling at this point stay safe basically and uh, if you feel any symptoms or anything do not hesitate to have uh, a test done and if you can't afford it go PCR instead of um, antibodies. And uh, yeah, let me actually uh, showcase today's deck, which is a Riven Taric list. Like I mentioned prior, it is a mid-range deck that is trying to combine Noxus and Targon in a very uh, combat trick based sort of tactic in which we have uh, Riven and Taric setting up some very nice attacks with support from the like of Mentor of the Stones, Brutal Hunter, which puts in the work in today's video, and an early curve comprised of Gift Giver, Spacey Sketcher, Mountain Goat into Rune Weaver. As you guys can see, our two drops are very similar. Uh, one of them is, will generate us you know, cheap combat tricks upon striking. The other one, at the expense of one health, will give us the uh, Reforge immediately upon entry in the Rune Weaver right here, as uh, we're also running a couple of copies of Weapon Hilt to help us work for the level up in Riven, because this deck actually does want to level up Riven. Believe it or not, you know, most decks that you see nowadays with Riven just kind of like run her for her stat line and her uh, ability, which is neat, but it, it, they don't really revolve around Reforge. You know, we've seen Riven being played, for example, in Ash Frostbite midrange, right? And she's just a good three drop there, even though I honestly like at that point, you're, you're probably better off running Draven because Draven is just the better three drop when it comes to, you know, synergy less value uh, as the quick attack goes a long way. And the fact that he keeps generating you axes, you know, you don't really need to synergize with that for Draven to be good, right? And I do think Draven will always be better than Riven in that role. I think if you want to play Riven, the reasoning behind that has to be you want to synergize with her. You, you want to benefit from the Reforge mechanic. Now, we didn't get much from the Reforge mechanic. You know, in fact, we got like, what, three cards? Yeah, we got the Blade Squire, the Rune Weaver, and the Weapon Hilt. We played two of those three cards. Blade Squire, unfortunately, even though I love the art, uh, I, I absolutely love it. 
Um, I don't really think this is a good card because of the stat line. If this was a 2-1, this would be great. But because it's a 1-2, it's too low impact. Your opponent can do a very easy job at ignoring it. And thus, the Reforged value will probably come in too late. And this will also be a pretty bad top deck in the late game as well. It's, there's just no redeeming the Blaze Choir, unfortunately. And uh, I don't recommend you play him. Rune Weaver, because of that 3 attack, even though she has 1 health, she still has a lot going on for her. Like, again, the 3 attack, enabling you to trade into fearsome units is very relevant. And uh, she does help us apply pressure as well with her high power stat. And her low health stat, which we can work to buff through the likes of Mentor of the Stones on Curve. Uh, we have two copies of Weapons Hilt. We don't run more because uh, <laughs> Pale Cascade is infinitely better, but it, it is important for us to, like I said, work for the Riven level up. So I ultimately decided that a couple of Hushes alongside a couple of Culling Strikes is uh, more or less the interaction that we need in this build, as we're also playing a couple of Spacey Sketchers, which I highly recommend for most Targon builds, especially if you have one that generates gems, even though we don't want to be discarding too many of our cheap combat tricks, as we are running a full set of Arbiter of the Peak at the high end of our curve, we do want to be playing Spacey Sketcher for the flexibility, the adaptability that we get uh, from her, as we are able to pull off something really useful against aggressive decks, uh, pull off something useful against slower decks, Decks. Equinox is a very good card in this meta, and there's just like so much utility behind this card that it would be foolish not to run her when we're running a full set of Mountain Goat, a full set of Mentor the Stones, and two copies of Gift Giver alongside the Rune, uh, sorry, the Reforge uh, package. So, uh, as you guys can see, uh, that alongside Hush and Culling Star, like I mentioned, good interaction for us, as then we have a one off of Guiding Touch. I didn't really have space for more, and I do prioritize Weapon Hilt over it, but I still think it's a fantastic card. It kind of like serves as a fourth Pill Casket in a way, especially when applied onto Tarek. You know, Pill Casket with Tarek is excellent because we get to draw two cards off of it, alongside gaining a total of uh, some quick mats plus six stats. So that's, that's pretty neat. And yeah, we also got a couple of copies of Shampoo. Motherfucking Shampoo is back because we really benefit from Rally in this deck. Not only is Rally obviously my favorite champion, it's also Riven's, because Riven will get us, or will reforge, sorry, whenever you gain the attack token, and this includes Rally effects, even though Shampoo is pretty expensive, in a deck in which we can build up for Arbiter of the Peaks to cause zero mana, we can set up an attack, an open attack, and then, as our opponent lowers their guard, we go for the Shampoo, we play a zero mana Arbiter of the Peak, and we overwhelm them. Literally. So that's uh, the premise of the deck list right here. We have a one-off of Might because it can be really damn strong with leveled up Riven, giving her plus six attack because of her ability. And uh, yeah, this deck plays out really well. Once we get, you know, we do have a bit of a slow start sometimes, but once we set up a nice board state and we get our attacks going, it's a menace, man. This deck is legit in that aspect, and it is very fun to play. I got some solid gameplay for you guys in, in Diamond Rank. <laughs> I'm still in Diamond. I, I barely played this, this Christmas, and uh, I promise I will be doing some uh, off-camera and on-camera climbing to Masters very, very soon. But I I'm also, like, I'm, I'm doing, like, a lot of stuff behind the scenes I can't really talk about right now. But, uh, yeah, I've been actually quite busy, believe it or not. Uh, and yeah, this is definitely the slowest climb that I had, but hopefully you enjoy this top tier diamond level gameplay And I'll see you guys tomorrow All right, Apple Nuts Is our opponent It's been a while as I've ran into some Nocturne actually And I don't mind this in at all like this is a really good curve Like one of the things that you gotta prioritize with this deck is finding your units, right? There's a lot of very neat combat tricks that we're running, you know, cards like Pale Cascade, amongst others. But you always need to prioritize like a solid curve. You need you need board presence. And uh, a little luck. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving me that trade. That's fantastic. Now he needs something else to block into the mountain goat. So I am I am a okay with this. Whew. Yeah, big regret there for my opponent. Apple nuts. Apple nuts just did a caca. We gotta respect Diana at all times. They have to attack every turn. So I'm just gonna pass. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. Dusk approaches. Night descends. I will be heard. Unfortunately, uh, 
Pale Cascade counters my Calling Strike. So there's not much I can do about it. Break the ties that bind. I can play Riven though. Get my Fragment. Now, Reforge is very poorly worded in this game, which is, again, not, not anything new in Legends of Runeterra. Like, that's one of the biggest downsides to this card game. Like, you like just reading cards is not enough to fully understanding how things work, unfortunately. And uh, even though I've been asking for, like, for a rule book for, like, forever, you know, it seems like we're not getting that. So, I'm going to explain a little bit what the, the problem here is with this wording, right? Uh... Reforge here says, create a random blade fragment still needed to restore the blade. Once you've cast all three, create the Blade of Exile. Now, the casting all three to form the Blade of Exile makes sense. Like, that's not unintuitive. The problem is, if I were to discard one of these fragments, I'm not entirely sure if I'm always going to be getting the Quick Attack and the Overwhelm ones after this one. Like, does it count when you generate it or does it count when you play it? You know, when it comes to, like, creating other fragments, right? That's not clear. Like, it's not clear in the slightest. I'm gonna get the Crescent Strike because we're facing a pretty aggressive deck, so having a card that can deny two attacks can go a long way. <clears throat> My opponent has a jump blocker here anyway, so it's not like I'm in the biggest of hurries. And now, now that we take that out of him. We call it strike. I could attack with Riven and trade that with the Crescent Guardian, but I don't... I have a hand filled with, like, spells. So, losing my Riven, which is going to be generating me more fragments, is ultimately just not worth it, right? So, we're going to continue to just focus on these gems. Okay. Um... Back now. I'm gonna play uh, the blade fragment to be able to trade into his attackers. Alright. Um, is the moment to crescent strike? I think it is. We slow down uh, Nocturne's level up as well. We play around Pale Cascade. Get rid of another chump blocker. As he loses the Stygian Onlooker as well. We're gonna be getting the quick attack nowadays, alright. Quick attack is pretty fine. Um yeah, these bastions are a little bit useless right now. We can work for a level up next turn potentially. Mystical levitation requires concentration. I'm no longer in Bastion, like, in Bastion range, right? He could have an unspeakable horror, but he has to play it immediately. Or he could play it now after the Stalking Shadows. He could Stalking Shadows into a speakable horror and deal with my Mentor of the Stones. But I have to try to do this because what this allows us to do is it allows us to buff up our Riven. That's good. Nope. I'm gonna buff the Mentor of the Stones so that I can trade into one of the two health units because I don't think my opponent is going to be willing to trade with the 5-3 because it is a very important resource for him. Uh, I'm gonna count the cards in my hand. I'm gonna pass here. As uh, we get a, a permanent buff onto our Riven, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're we're just not drawing into more units, so we're gonna there's gonna have to be like a Riven win here, which can happen. I just have to survive this turn. 
I have hush. I have hush. But we gotta expect the likes of Nocturne. This could be a turn for Nocturne. If Nocturne goes down, he does have the ability. I I, I can't I can't hush, right? And I can always surprise with the weapon hilt here. I'm gonna use a gem. Because this allows me to utilize my Rivenous Blocker. It's right. a lot of power my opponent is stacking up here. No more hiding. It must be done. Oh, you're interesting. The problem is if he does run atrocity, this sort of block. Can I paint you? Hold still. This block is better because There's so much to answer for. Going down to two. We lose to Atrocity. Just gotta keep in mind, like, the, the amount of mana that I have. Four, six, six, nine, which still leaves us with two potentially for that. Okay. to attack. Whatever he gets with uh, super cool start chart, it won't it won't be enough. Like Equinox cannot be utilized onto Riven. Oh, but what if he has... He could have a Crescent Strike. Crescent Strike could be a thing. There's Nocturne. Alright. Both of them have Overwhelm, so it's just a matter of using... this with Bastion? I probably should have used the Bastion here, but if he has a Hush, he has a Hush, right? I need no Pale Cascade. Hey! Got him, baby! Whoo! There we go! Mistake, though. I know what I must do. Yeah, I know what I should have done, actually. No more hesitation. Uh, two, two lines? Okay. <laughs> diamond, diamond YouTuber, baby. Uh, yeah, there was a mistake there, though, that I, I was kicking myself over. Like, it's one of these things that I, I have to, like... I have to be more decisive about these things because it's the logical thing to do, right? Like, I was so obsessed with holding on to Bastion. 
even though if they had Hush, they would go for it immediately. Like, Hush would win the game anyways, and I can't really think of, like, any... I mean, unspeakable horror, but that can go face if, if it depends on, on keeping them alive or not. Ultimately, if they had a Pale Cascade, that line of play would have been shut down. But if I go for the Blade, because the Blade gives plus two attack, instead of holding the Bastion back, if I go for said Blade, um, I, I basically get one more attack. Which means that even if they do have a Pale Cascade, I still kill them, right? And that could have cost me the match. Like, that kind of decision... Uh, I should be more, I don't know, I should be more confident with making that sort of decision. I, I don't know why I was hesitating so much, because I'm, 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 I'm a bit rusty, like I haven't, I haven't played this Christmas much, right? So I feel, I have this like sensation, or this thought rather, that there's like something that I'm forgetting about. You know, there's this classic card that I just forgot existed, and I'm gonna get completely destroyed by it. And Bastion was the right play to go for. Like, that's exactly why I'm not going for it. And it's just really silly, right? <laughs> because if I can't come up with it, I can't come up with it. You know? Like, I don't know. Yeah. that, that was, That's a bit of a ramble. So, yeah. Ho hopefully, we learned something from this today. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Let, let's go for another one. <laughs> Stop talking. All right. This is the infamous Zoe Lee Sin deck. We're mulling away the Arbor of the Peak at all times. Uh, we have Mentor of the Stones. We tend to mulligan away the Weapon Hilt. Something that we can draw later down the line. I, I like Mentor on Curve. Um, I like Pale Cascade too. I'm going to keep it. I need to be able to apply pressure. And Pale Cascade is a neat card to have. And we already have like a solid 3 drop in Mentor of the Stones here. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident that was a alright. Cool story, girl. We're gonna play the Rune Weaver. And uh, we are gonna take a hit from Zoe. Not much else we can do about that. Uh, they're gonna go for that immediately. I'm surprised. I'm I'm very surprised. I, I do not understand the purpose of this. Unless they want to get a serpent. They want to get a serpent. Why not go for that earlier though? Hmm, okay. Interesting. Okay, so if we attack here and uh, we do that, we're good. Gems are superb. Bad for the teeth. So basically, what I'm what I'm thinking about here is that if if my opponent blocks into Mentor of the Stones and I get three three uh, stones or gems, I'll go up to nine cards, which means as I draw a card next turn, I will not overdraw. A hush for this turn. That is completely fine by me. He's a den. He's a den. I mean, I'm gonna hold this back. I'm gonna attack. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, that hush like slowed me down a turn, but mystical levitation requires concentration. When will I find peace? Celestial power. Must be done. We're fine against Bill Cascade. <clears throat> we do want to get rid of this. We got the Brutal Hunter next turn. He keeps doing this. He keeps going for the Super School... I can't even pronounce he, ke he keeps going for the hand. He keeps going for the hand, and I, I don't understand why. why. Why are you doing this? Alright, I, I don't want to develop the Brutal Hunter just yet. I want to surprise him first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to discard the Mentor of the Stones, I believe. I think Messenger is fine. I have Bastion, so I don't need Moon Glow. Moon Silver could be good, too. I think I'm going to go with the Moon Silver, actually. Being able to, like... Go ahead of, of my curve. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's not great, but that's fine. You and I have raised cities. Nothing can break our bond. All things can be broken, Tenef. Now that we've gotten the Equinox out of him by going for by passing over initiative and going for Spacey Sketcher, we you know baited our opponent into a play like that, and now. Purple? We're gonna deal with Zoe, baby. 
Now, Ahash doesn't stop the Brutal Hunter from taking it down. This is just beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna attack with everything. Conflict awaits. You are my prey. Bam, bam. Because for one mana, they can't do shit. Uh, I've seen all the cards that they're because they're 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 not like keeping anything for surprise with this. Yeah. Yeah, we knock her out, baby. That's huge. That's huge. That slows them down significantly. Obviously, uh, Lee Sin is still a threat. Sparkle fly. I would like to find an Equinox, actually. I think I can use this Moon Silver to pre prepare for next turn's level up. So I'm going to use it as a way to enable Nightfall here. Could bait a pale cascade here. I'm too airborne. By doing this, I'm making him think that maybe. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna go for a pale cascade to heal up my Riven. My opponent just keeps doing that. Um, at this point, I think I'm just gonna fucking discard one of these Bill Caskies, man. It's too many. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. He could very easily have a a Nopify. But uh, Bastion and Deny are no longer a thing. And again, we're we're using the moon uh, on this because we wanna get the level up going. Again, Nopify could be a thing here. All right. I could go for the for the fragment here, but I I think I would like the quick attack. Yeah. All right. We got the overwhelm. We got another Bastion in here. Okay. I can preemptively Bastion as well. I don't get the hit off with uh, with Riven here. Mystical levitation we don't. Concentration. We don't see Lee Sin go down. Oh, we need it. I'm gonna get this uh, this gem in here though. I really want to go for this Blade of Exile, even though it could be very easily countered. My opponent has six cards in hand. Someone's going in. He could have a. What if he has a Sonic? What if he has a Sonic uh, wave? We three have slain a hundred foes to find you. Tenneth, nothing ever could stop you, bold sister. Go, floaty crystals! 
There's always the possibility of um, of pale cascade. Protector, shield me. Really, just needed some tape to reassemble. We're gonna go for the blade. It's gonna go for the heel. This Zoe is very far away from leveling up, though. We get the quick attack one, which um, doesn't make too much of a difference. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we are... We're gonna go crazy on him. They say these were from the protector himself. We're going for the kill. <laughs> Got him! Yeah, no, no more fighting when we killed him, right? <laughs> I like the timing. Oh, beating down to Lee Sin without Lee Sin, to be fair. Like, it was more of like a Zoe uh, game. You know, that, I mean, that's that's why those decks run Zoe as well. Like, you're not going to be drawing Lee Sin every match. And uh, Zoe can be a massive threat as well just because of the elusive. Like, you know, I I think I've been saying this quite a bit recently, but it's just funny, you know, because I, I, I remember when they announced Zoe and everybody was just, like, freaking out about how she was going to be the worst champion because she was... No, her level up requirement was too hard, but then it come it, it just it turns out, you know, you're you're a one mana elusive that has a very big text <laughs> and gets you card advantage upon striking, and that's already like good enough to make you good, right? English. So pretty nice game in that sense. Uh we did draw a little a few too many spells. We've got to showcase Riven back to back super well. But I wanna I wanna showcase like Riven with uh Tarek. Uh and Brutal Hunter has been brutal. Sorry for the button. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit rusty, okay? But really, really have been liking the deck. So let's go for another one. Another? Really? Okay, this has to be a thing, right? This, this has to be like a meta thing, right? Maybe it's an answer to all the uh, Lee Sin Zoe decks running around. That, that could be a thing. Where I keep Tarek. I'm very excited to showcase Tarek. Um, how how useful can Spacey Sketch can be very useful this match. I'm gonna drop the Bastion. Bastion is uh you know more mediocre in general. Yeah, I don't want to resort to my spacey sketchers. I can get like actual value out of them. Bah. We're gonna play Mountain Goat. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. I could attack to uh, trade these two, but I think I'd rather preserve the fearsome blocker. Go a long way. These people are like playing super cool star chart instead of the. Um, I mean, I I think it's better. I, I, it makes sense to me that people are playing that instead of the of like the actual regular invoke one because it's more precise, right? Surprised to see how often I'm seeing it though. I think we play another mountain goat here. Bah. I don't have to worry about a uh, power reduction play this turn. Like we're, we're not on four mana, which is where Nocturne comes down. Okay. I could hush Diana if she comes down. It's a good way to killing her. I don't think I'll be playing Tarek on her if I do that. Okay. The ever the ever shade stalker. I actually I you know what? I, I wanna build a I'm gonna build a Nocturne deck with this thing. Devotion to battle. Let's go with this. And here's where I paint my 
just a big fan of the moon silver. It can really help me out momentum wise. And honestly, I do like Terra here. Just because I can gem it up. Giving me an attacker that can uh, trade with both units on his board. I can survive a Pale Cascade uh, from this because of my toughness. And I continue. I work for my Arbiter of the Peak here. And for my Taric level up as well. Naturally. That's 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 the big guns. We we don't we don't like seeing the big guns. We do like seeing you. Okay. We're we're going places, we just gotta stay alive. Like that's that's the biggest thing here. As if, as, as if that's not ever the biggest thing, <laughs> like surviving, <laughs> like there's no matchup. Uh, alright, um... I don't know if leading off with the Rune Weaver is correct though, because unspeakable horror could happen here. Discipline and conviction. Cool story, bro. Fascinating. Think here for a second. Both of these. Lost in reflection. No turning back now. Shatter that. Unyielding. Never submit. I am the protector of the mountain. could go for a Shampo here. A Shampo would just basically force him to... A Shampo would basically force him to uh, to block here. He can't block with the Evershade Stalker. I'm gonna go for it, I think. There's still much to answer for. Shampoo time! This is like the ultimate surprise Shampo here. Like, he could not have expected this. You don't, you don't play around a shampoo that costs four mana. Bless the people and see it. Never submit. No mercy for heretics. Right. Alright, they're coming. We have the weapons hilt, so we won't we won't be overrun by Bloom and fade with the morning. I mean it's important for us to overwhelm here. It's also important for us to have hush, right? The thing is, as long as we, we have this guy, we'll be fine. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. 
We got the Crescent Strike, which is exactly what we need here. I want to keep the Overwhelm Fragment because... Now we do this. Lost in reflection. Now we cross the strike. We stun him down. He comes in. We block with you here. Still exactly lethal, so we have to be very wary about things. Um must be done. There's always the possibility of uh, of Pale Cascade. You are unworthy. If that's the case and we lose this, we still have the ability to uh, to Blade Fragment next turn. So we go with this. I assume they have a, a Pale Cascade. Yeah. Our light grows brighter. Is that the end? No, that was a regular pill cascade. Okay, we trade here. Take a little bit of damage. Weaken the rest of his board, and we're going for the kill with the duel. That's two damage here, and that's three damage here. How can he stop this? I have double hush. There's still much to answer for. How could he stop this? Besides Pale Cascade, how does he stop this, right? It's too much, right? Oblige them on broken wings! Meet destiny. Got him. Got him, baby. Got him. That was hot. <laughs> Whoo. Okay. Oh. Okay, that was beautiful. <laughs> I gotta lie. Um, I'm starting to think that today. Like, there's like a certain trend happening and people are playing Nightfall Nocturne because of like a specific matchup. I would guess uh, because of the prevalence of Lee Sin Zoe since it is uh, it seems like a pretty decent matchup for Nightfall. Like that could be or I could be completely wrong, right? I, it could have just been a coincidence, but I, I don't think coincidences exist in uh, ranked Legends of Runeterra because people tend to gravitate towards what a specific um, like what a specific or what a certain group of people are doing right so if certain streamers are saying oh today we should play nightfall because of the meta is like this then i i wouldn't be surprised to see like a bunch of people you know copying their decks uh because it's been a very long time since i've like i've ran into like back-to-back -back nightfall and that was uh, very interesting but that makes me want to build a deck too because uh, i've yet to play the uh the evergreat uh everglade stalker i think is the name and I definitely do want to mess around with this with that card. Uh, we're we've been at it for over 40 minutes, so that will do for today's video. I want to make sure I don't have this too late for uh, for Gabby, who is my editor, in case you don't know. And yeah, very happy with the results, man. Very fun deck to play. Uh, you know, needless to say, this is not a tier one deck by any means. There are a lot of issues, like for example, we don't really deal with Grand Plaza too well. We get outpaced by certain decks, but ultimately, it is a solid tier three, tier two deck. And it is uh, a very neat use of like Riven synergy because right now like the most prevalent decks Riven has been in in the meta are actually decks that don't benefit too much from Riven's ability so much as just her stat line and the fact that you know she gives you stuff on top of like her you know excellent vanilla stat line for a three drop right uh, but this one really goes uh, you know the next step it, it's it does really suck that uh, I don't feature Arrow the Tracker. Even though I probably will have explained this in the deck tech anyways. 
But, um, you know, this was originally a uh, Arrow the Tracker deck until I had to take her out and, uh, you know, go with Arbiter of the Peak. But that's where I'll end my rambling. Try out the list. It's very fun. And hopefully you enjoy. And that's all I got to say. Have a swell day. Same thing for daily Legends of Runeterra content. And I'll see you guys around.